Hey everybody, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we are going to talk about how to ask better questions when it comes to setting goals. Right off the bat, there is no shade to anybody who has ever asked one of these questions before. Honestly, I just blame marketing from companies, coaches, and influencers. And hopefully by the end of the video today, you understand how to ask better questions to figure out if a coach or a program is the right fit for you and your goals. All right, so here are the top three most common questions I see being asked to me or I just see on the internet. Does this work? Is this effective? Will this get me results? Now these might sound like solid questions to you, but there's a lot of information that we don't know. Let's start with the top one. Does it work? I most often see this question on videos like this. It's someone claiming that this program or this method or this one specific exercise drastically changed their body in X amount of time. So of course people comment on it and they wanna know if it actually works or if it's just <laughs> manipulative marketing, which it is by the way. So let's dissect this question a little bit. What does work mean? Is it weight loss? Is it increased muscle mass? Is it better endurance? All three of these things, you're gonna go about achieving them in a completely different way. Yes, there's gonna be overlap, but by just asking, does this work? It gives me little to no information about what your actual goals are and what work means to you. Is this effective? Once again, what does effective mean? Effective at what? Effective at building muscle? effective at weight loss, effective at improving your endurance capabilities to go hiking every weekend. Like we want to get more specific than just is this effective? Will this get me results? You see where we're going here, right? What do results mean to you? What does that look like? What does that feel like? What does that appear as in terms of you looking ahead and going, I achieve my goal? So do you see it now? Do you hear it? Personally, I feel like once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's everywhere. And this is great. This is a good starting place because now you're able to do two things. First and foremost, you're gonna get better at being able to articulate your goals. You're gonna understand how to talk about what you want. And number Number two, you're going to be able to identify some bullshit out there. The most effective workout split is the 3-2-1 Pilates X Strength Method, where in just four weeks, I completely became unrecognizable to everybody that I love in life. I think that's like actually verbatim from a ladder ad. Now, I make a ton of content on unethical marketing, and I don't want this video to turn into more commentary on that. Instead, I wanna turn the focus to you. Now, I already made an entire video coaching three people through goal setting about two or three years ago, so you can check that out if you wanna see that like live in action. But today, I'm actually gonna sift through all of my old client intake forms, and I'm gonna pick the three most common goals that people came to me with. From there, we're gonna talk about the most efficient ways to accomplish those goals based on the current studies that we have access to. And I'm going to show you how to ask better questions of your coach or someone selling you a program to make sure that it is the right fit for your goals. So let's hop on into it. All right. So I already run through a ton of intake forms. I'm obviously not going to share that with you. That's, you know, confidential. And these were by far the top three things that people came to me for. Weight and or fat loss, increased strength, and build a sustainable routine. I feel like those are all pretty diverse too, with kind of like different jumping off points. So let's start with the first one. Weight and or fat loss. So as a coach, the very first thing I'm going to do when someone comes to me with a weight or fat loss goal is to ask them what that means to them. So for some people, that means a number on the scale. For other people, it might just mean feeling and looking better in their clothes. So I would say as a potential consumer, consumer or client really come in understanding what that looks like to you. One of my favorite questions to ask people is if you had a genie and you could snap your fingers, make a wish, and this goal was achieved tomorrow, what would it look like? What would it feel like? Get really specific here. If your answer is a specific number on the scale, I'm going to ask you why. Why that specific number? Is that the number that your doctor recommended to you? Is that what you used to weigh in college? Or is that just an arbitrary number that like feels morally satisfying? Nine times out of 10, when people people come to me with a specific number and I start picking it apart, we actually realize that it's not about the number on the scale, it's more about how they look and feel. And that's a really important distinction to make because we have to remember that the number on the scale encompasses everything, right? That encompasses your fat mass, your muscle mass, your bone density. God, the last time you took a solid bowel movement. <laughs> so really understanding what you want, is it that number on the scale or is it just looking and feeling a little bit better? Is it a combination of both? That's gonna help me as your coach and you as the 
consumer understand if it's a good fit. The next thing I do after I just pick apart at this goal a little bit is I'm gonna explain to you how weight loss or fat loss occurs. I've covered this in so many videos, so this is gonna be really, really quick, but the only way that we can lose fat on the body is through being in a caloric deficit, meaning that you're taking in less energy than you're expending. So if you're coming to me, let's say for personal training, or let's say you're joining the Fit Club, or you wanna purchase a program from me, and you ask me, is this a good option for fat loss? I'm gonna explain that the easiest way to get into that deficit is gonna be through nutritional changes. There's also other things that help support this goal, improving your sleep, daily movement outside of your workouts, and then obviously strength training as well. You know, let's say you're coming to me for personal training and we meet once a week for an hour. That's less than 1% of your entire week. So if you zoom out and look at it like that, that one change is going to benefit your health. But is it the most efficient way to get to that fat loss goal? No, I'm not saying that you shouldn't strength train if you have a fat loss goal. Increased muscle mass is gonna help with your hormonal health. It's also going to require more energy at rest to maintain than fat mass. So there's definitely benefits here and there's a big correlation, but again, the easiest way to get into that deficit is going to be through nutritional changes. We simply don't use enough energy during our workouts and we're not working out nearly as much as we think in comparison to the rest of the week and all of the other changes and things that we can focus on for it to really make a big difference. I understand that that can be really frustrating to hear, especially if someone comes to me with a weight loss goal and they're like, well, this is the first change that I'm making. So I guess this is a waste of time. It's not a waste of time. These little changes and habits can snowball into making better decisions and working toward your goal. We have to remember that pretty much any goal, it's not just gonna be one thing. We're gonna wanna zoom out and look at all of the different habits that we're forming. So if you are somebody with a weight loss or a fat loss goal, you're looking to start a program or work with a trainer, my number one advice to you with this goal is to come in on understanding what that means to you. Pick it apart, get specific, and know that there is no such thing as a fat loss program. There is no such thing as a weight loss program. So if a coach is trying to sell you something with that verbiage, they either don't know what they're talking about or they're trying to take advantage of you. Let's talk about our next goal, which is increasing strength. Obviously, I love this goal, but the first thing I'm gonna ask is what does strength mean to you? Is that performing a specific exercise? Is that visible muscle mass? Is that avoiding injuring your back? Most often, I'm gonna to get an answer like, oh, well, I want to have a little more muscle definition and I want to perform this specific skill. Most of the time it's a push up. So that's fantastic. Right from that sentence, I understand they want to have a little more visible muscle mass. So I'm going to work them in more of that hypertrophy zone. And I also understand that they have a skill based goal. They want to learn how to do push ups. I'm going to start with that. Where are you at with push ups right now? Are you doing elevated? Are you doing them from the floor? Are you doing them on the knees? Are you doing them at all? Whatever your answer is, I know as a coach, great, that's our starting point. I'm gonna look at these when we actually get moving and I'm gonna program a very strategic progression on how to get us from, let's say you're doing push-ups on your knees to getting us full, chest to floor pushups. Since you gave me a specific skill, I'm gonna ask you, is there anything else specifically that you wanna look at, that you wanna work on that means strength to you? And I think as a client, these are really good things to think about because it's gonna give you another measure of progress. You know, muscle takes a long time to build, weight loss can take a long time to happen if that's part of your goal as well, dropping fat to see that muscle definition. So having something outside of those two things, which honestly take a good chunk of time and there's a lot of other factors at play, being able to measure week by week how how far down you can get to the floor, how high up your elevation is for your incline push-ups, how much weight you can deadlift, how much range of motion you have in a certain exercise. All of these other things are gonna be great measures of progress for a strength-based goal. So for you, if you have a strength-based goal, I want you to pick that apart. Again, what does that mean to you? Are there any specific exercises or skills that you would like to learn? And if you're looking for a program that supports increasing your strength, I would just make sure how do I say this kindly? If you're only taking 15 seconds of rest between exercises that work the same muscle groups, it's not really strength training. It is just kind of becoming cardio with weights. So just keep that in mind. All right, and the final goal, build a sustainable routine. So what I typically start with is what is that sustainable routine look like? What's your ideal realistic routine? Let's say you come back to me and you say, well, I wanna strength train three times a week. That's an amazing goal. What is your current routine? Maybe you come back to me with 
absolutely nothing. That's totally fine. Everyone has to start somewhere, right? So then we can start brainstorming first steps. Let's say you're coming to me for personal training. That's a great place to start. We meet once a week. Maybe you just start there. You build the habit of once a week meeting with me, understanding those basic skills, getting your motivation up. Then maybe we talk about assigning homework in between sessions. We start with just one homework session a week. How's that going? How do you like it? Do you like following workouts from the Fit Club? Would you prefer something written? Do you need a little bit of accountability? So maybe you want a program from the Fit Club. All of my personal training clients get access to the Fit Club. That's why I keep talking about it. <laughs> and then from there, maybe we start working together twice a week and you get one day of homework. Like this is the type of stuff we want to look at. We want to get hyper specific so that you have a very clear path from point A to your goal, point B, or C, D, E, F, whatever, how many steps it takes to get there. So once again, as a client or a consumer, if you have that goal of building a sustainable routine, what's your ideal routine? What is your current routine? And then take that to your coach. How do I get from point A to point B? How do I get from current to ideal? I think the biggest thing to look for in terms of red flags here is just making sure that you're not going from zero to 60 right off the bat. You wanna start slow, especially if you aren't doing much to start and build on top of that foundation over time. This is the same reason why yo-yo diets don't work, why crash diets don't work, why challenges in terms of workouts a lot of times don't work. 75 hard. It's because a lot of times these things are A, not sustainable, but B, they're not teaching you how to accomplish anything after you're done. Like if you're doing a workout challenge and you have to work out every single day for, I don't know, 75 days, which is actually twice a day, which is wild. But what do you do after the challenge? What do you do? I'll tell you what typically happens. You drop off of doing anything because it was so hard, it was so all-consuming, and you haven't built any skills outside of just participating in a really tough challenge that maybe got you quick results, but zooming out, it really taught you nothing. All right, so that is the video. Hopefully you understand how to ask better questions, how to set better goals for yourself, and how to make more informed decisions on if something is right for you. If you have any questions at all, better questions, no, I'm just kidding, any questions at all, <laughs> leave them down in the comments below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out, and I will see you all in the next one.